If you sat down and wrote out a timeline as to how you approach learning a standard, how would it look? Today I look back at how I used to learn repertoire and I can see so many mistakes which hindered my long-term progress and ultimately impacted on, in the long run, how comfortable I was with playing a tune, whether that be on my own at home, at a rehearsal, at a jam session, or at a gig. Now, if you recognize the following repertoire problems, things like forgetting melodies, forgetting chords, forgetting the form, all those types of things, then this video is for you. I'm gonna share with you three really common mistakes you can make when learning standards, and then I'll share with you my favorite timeline for learning a jazz standard so that it sticks for the long term. Because if you work at repertoire properly, standards just get easier and easier over time, and actually they continue to offer more creative possibilities. Firstly, let's define repertoire. Definition of repertoire is all the plays, songs and pieces of music that a performer knows and can perform. Now that's a very broad definition of repertoire, obviously applicable to different art forms and creative endeavours. Let's think about that more a bit specifically to learning jazz standards. My personal interpretation would be this, that would be, you know the chords to the song, you know the melody to the song, and I mean really know that, and you know the form, and you've probably got a decent intro or outro for it too. So onto three timelines which I don't think lead to good long-term results. And the first timeline is about jumping between standards. And the timeline goes like this. You start a new standard, and the second stage of the timeline is you either get bored of that standard or maybe you find it too difficult, you bit off more you can chew, and then the timeline goes, you start a new standard and then you repeat and continue that for many years. Now that will lead to lots of half-known songs, lots of superficial understanding of songs, the inability to play a song from memory, and what you don't get in that kind of approach is really the ability to giving yourself enough time with the song to internalize the sound of the chord structure to appreciate the harmony and to just really know that melody to the point where you can sing it and play on the guitar without needing anything to help you do that. So if you find yourself starting a standard then jumping to another and just continuing that, that's something you want to try and nip in the bud and think I need to stop doing that and focus on what is my repertoire, what songs do I actually want to get together properly. Now the second timeline I encounter a lot when working uh, with students and that is not memorizing standards. And it goes like this. First stage, you start a new standard. You play that with music, so you've got either a real book or whatever you're using to, to help you follow that chords or the melody. And then you just continue, that's how you're gonna continue playing that song in any new standard going forward. So you're always gonna need music to play that song. Now whilst I wouldn't dismiss that approach completely, I do occasional gigs with bands thrown together where there's charts and you, know, you don't have time to learn the music, so you just have to follow it at a gig. But when it comes to at home, in the practice room, learning repertoire, I think this is a real issue. It might help you execute the chords and the melody as you're following along and playing along, but do you actually know the standard? Do you know the song? Or are you just, you know, your brain's following the patterns that it sees and executing what it sees in the music or the chords? And at this point, I would challenge a student and say, right, can you hum or sing that melody? Don't play it, don't look at the music, don't play it on the guitar, because if you can't, I would question whether you actually know it. And I'm sure if I said, can you hear happy birthday in your head without someone having to play it for you, I'm sure you can do that. That's where you wanna take the sound of the chord structures and the melody too. One of my bugbears with this, following music all the time to play a piece of music, is that hopefully one day you're gonna play these songs with other people, and even if you're not, part of your bandwidth is taken up by just following the music, following the chords. And that, for me, means we're missing out on, well, that bandwidth could be used for better things. It could be used for trying to play it expressively, dynamically, or if you're playing with other people, really listening to what they're doing and how what you're doing is interacting with their instrumentation. Now, timeline three, start a new standard, play it without understanding it, repeat with all other standards in the future, which for me means you miss a massive learning opportunity, which is to make connections between songs, recognizing similar chord progressions and movements, which makes it much easier to remember and hear standards. So if someone's playing without understanding what's happening, say if we take the opening to all the things you are, the first eight bars, they're literally just seeing that as F minor seven, B flat minor seven, oh, then there's E flat seven, then there's A flat major and so forth. Whereas someone that understands it appreciates what key they're in, and that's going six, two, five, one, four, then a secondary dominant, then leading to C major. 
it's not just a series of random chords that happen to sound nice. If you appreciate what's going on, it means you can more easily remember it because you understand it, but also you're able to, rather than say take it chord by chord, you see it as in a chunk and understand it and structure and break it up for yourself more mentally. And you might be able to relate to, recognize some of those pitfalls in your own approach to learning the repertoire. So what would make a good timeline? And this is how I approach things and it's through years of needing to learn repertoire for bands and gigs and just how I've managed my own practice time. So first off, when learning a new standard, you aim to understand it and intend to memorize it. Repertoire maintenance. Now, repertoire maintenance is the thing that was missing in all of the previous timelines I mentioned. And that is simply, alongside, say, learning your most recent new song, you maintain your old songs so you don't forget them. So I build into my practice working on a new song, but I'm also always constantly reviewing, maintaining, working on developing new ideas over or just memorizing or ensuring I can remember songs for gigs. So I've got a new song on the go plus all the repertoire that I need to maintain. I would suggest creating a list. Now the third step really isn't a step, it's more the outcome of doing steps one and two. And that is simply, if you follow those methods, you should find that you're left with a standard that you've memorized, that you know is imprinted, etched in your brain. You just, you just know it, and you know it musically, and you don't need any music to play it. And you'll be able to play it next year, five years from now, 10 years from now. Now this isn't gonna happen with every song. You do need to pick and choose your repertoire. And that, as I said, might be informed by what you like, the genre of jazz or subgenre of jazz you like, or by the jam session you go to, or band you perform in. All those things would inform what is your repertoire and what you need to maintain and work on. Now getting those long-term results, having a musical understanding of a standard, depends on many other things in terms of how you're approaching practicing songs. So you may find my video, which I'll put up on the screen, it's my seven steps to learning a jazz standard helpful. Uh, thanks for tuning in. If you've got any comments, questions, leave them below. Uh, don't forget Jazz Guitar Lessons every Wednesday with myself, Andy. Until next time, you take care.